Joining us now it, it, from Ottawa is Amira El Gawabi. She is a human rights coordinator for the National Council of Canadian Muslims. Hi, Amira. Hi, Sandy. This all comes back to, does it not, the radicalization of young people? Well, I think yesterday's arrests certainly once again are bringing this into the spotlight. Uh, you know, the community is reacting with a lot of shock uh, about these arrests, uh, the arrest yesterday. Um, a lot of people did uh, know this individual. He was quite involved in the community. Um, and people are really surprised. People who knew him uh, have told me that, you know, he was not expressing, uh, you know, these kinds of uh, disturbing views that he's being allegedly uh, charged with here. Um, he was not expressing those views. Um, and so that maybe there was a double life going on uh, that people were not aware of. Uh, that being said, there are also reports that uh, at least two mosques were concerned enough to ask him to no longer frequent those mosques. So it seems that um, there might be a disconnect here where some people may be concerned about the views, but how do they then exp you know, tell others to, to watch out for something that they feel is disturbing? So I think as, as the days go on and, and the community tries to understand what, what was going on with this individual, uh, I think it definitely reminds us all that we need to continue uh, to work on getting the me messages out about Islam and the, under the proper understanding and to really de debunk and demystify any kind of uh, ideology that may uh, be uh, sort of promoted by individuals within the community uh, to ensure that that is definitely not the message that's being given to any of our young people or anyone at all. Well, Amira, how do you begin to do that? Because you have to uh, separate the lure of extremism from the religion itself. but. You know, what is the lure of extremism and, and who do recruiters specifically target? Well, you know, I, I, just like the rest of uh, Canadian society, we're grappling with these issues. We're trying to understand what's going on. We have academics uh, in various institutions that are studied the whole area of radicalization. And there are certain things that they, you know, that they recommend that, that should be done within communities on how to try to spot these, uh, you know, if someone is starting to retreat away from their friends, their workplace, or if they are uh, suddenly having different kinds of circles of friends and whatnot. So there are hints as to what to look for. And in fact, our organization, along with another Muslim organization, did publish in the fall a uh, United Against Terrorism handbook, which was trying, again, to sort of provide a tool for community members, parents, families, uh, on how to sort of try to identify, uh, you know, perhaps possible indicators that may be giving people a clue that radicalization may be happening. So certainly the communities across Canada uh, realize that this is a very serious issue uh, and we're responsible to really try to help, you know, solve this issue. And if these charges, uh, you know, come true and that this individual was involved in promoting or encouraging uh, terrorism, that we have to really, again, find out how how is this happening? Uh, what do we need to do? And Canadian Muslim communities are part of the solution. Right. Uh, we've been saying that from the beginning and we are working with partners, within uh, authorities, uh, within social services, et cetera, et cetera, to try to figure out how how can we play? We have a very important role to play because clearly uh, we need to continue pushing out the message and getting uh, young people. Uh, and in fact, it's actually happening in the mosques. For example, in a few days at one of our local mosques, there's going to be a whole discussion around you know, extremist radicalization, an open forum for young people to come. And we're going to try to encourage people uh, to sort of speak out and, and, and maybe share some of the concerns or some of the ideas that they may be seeing online or hearing from individuals so that the scholars themselves can tackle those head on and really set people straight if they're unsure of what's uh, of what's being promoted here. All right, Amira El Gawabi, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your insight. Thank you.